Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to troubleshoot the top seven reasons why your electric dryer gets too hot. Stick around till the end of the video for an important dryer safety tip that most people don't even know about. But before we begin, we're going to make sure the appliance is unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. The first thing we're going to check for if your dryer gets too hot is restricted airflow. This is usually caused by the exhaust being kinked or clogged or dirty lint screen. Make sure to clean your exhaust and make sure the outside vent hood is working properly. Also make sure that the lint screen isn't damaged, rusted, or clogged up with lint. It needs to be cleaned after every load to ensure proper airflow. Now we can check the heating element. The heating element heats the air before it goes into the dryer drum. The heating element is made up of a coiled wire inside a metal heater box. If the element is damaged in touching the heater box, it could short to ground, causing the element to stay on all the time and the dryer to get too hot. This is a single coil element, but there are a lot of them out there that have dual coils. To make sure the part can carry an electric current, we need to test it with a multimeter for continuity. Once you have it set, touch the probes together to make sure it's working. This is a single coil style. To check it, remove everything from the terminals. Then we're going to test each terminal to ground. So put one probe on the heater box and then touch each terminal separately. If either one of them shows continuity, then the element is grounded and needs to be replaced. To check a dual coil element, you need to remove the wires. Then you can test this one the same way. Touch one probe to the heater box and then touch each of the other terminals. If any of them have continuity, it'll need to be replaced. If you need to order a part, simply go to appliancepartspros.com and type in your model number. Find your part on the easy to read diagrams and match it to the number below. Click on the part if you want to see more pictures of the item or watch its repair video. You can also scroll down to see DIY stories from customers like you or ask a question in the Q&A section. Once you're ready, you can add the part to your cart. It's that easy. Most orders will arrive within two business days. Next is the cycling thermostat. It regulates the temperature inside the dryer by cycling the heat on and off. The cycling thermostats are usually rated in between 135 and 165 degrees Fahrenheit. This particular one is rated at 155 degrees. If the contacts inside have fused together, the dryer could get too hot because the heat will stay on until the high limit thermostat kicks in and shuts it off. It's usually located on the blower housing, but on some models, it can be located by the heat source. To test it, we need to remove it from the dryer. Once it's out, we're going to attach the multimeter probes to the terminals. It should have continuity. Then we're going to heat it up a little bit past its rated temperature and see if it breaks continuity to make sure it's working properly. You can use anything to heat it up. We're going to use a blow dryer and as it heats up, we'll read the temperature with a thermometer. As you're heating it up, you want to go slow so that the inside of the thermostat has time to come up to the correct temperature, otherwise you might get a bad reading. You want to make sure that it doesn't break continuity before the rated temperature. Once you get past the rated temperature, check the meter again to make sure that there's no longer continuity. If it loses continuity at a higher temperature, or not at all, the contacts inside have likely fused together and you'll need to replace it. Now we're going to check the high limit thermostat. It's a safety device that shuts off the heat if the dryer gets too hot. High limit thermostats are rated at 180 degrees Fahrenheit and up. This one's rated at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. It's usually located near the heat source, but can sometimes be found on the blower housing. We're going to remove the wires and take the thermostat off the heating element so we can test it. We're going to test it just like the cycling thermostat by attaching the multimeter probes to the terminals. It should have continuity. Because the high limit thermostat is rated at a higher temperature, we're going to have to use a heat gun instead of a blow dryer along with the thermometer. Same as before, we're going to heat it up slowly so that the inside of the thermostat has time to come up to the correct temperature. Once it gets past the rated temperature, it should lose continuity. If it doesn't, or if it loses continuity at a temperature higher than the thermostat is rated, it needs to be replaced. Next, we need to check the cycling thermostat bias heater. It allows the dryer to use multiple temperature settings with only one cycling thermostat. 
Not all dryers have a bias heater. If yours does, it's built into the cycling thermostat and uses the two smaller terminals for power. It heats up the cycling thermostat, so it cycles at a lower temperature than it's rated for. If it fails, it may cause the lower temperature settings to run too hot. Now we need to check the wiring diagram to find the bias heater's specific ohm rating. In our case, it should be between 5600 and 8400 ohms. Once you know your rating, set your meter to read the proper ohms range. We're just going to set ours to the ohm symbol because our meter automatically detects whatever's coming in. Remember, cycling thermostats are usually located on the blower housing or near the heat source. Once you locate it, remove the two smaller wires from the terminals and touch a probe to each one. If the reading is not within the specified range, you'll need to replace the cycling thermostat. As always guys, hit those like and subscribe buttons now to help support us making more of these videos. Next we'll check the thermistor. The thermistor is a sensor that tells the dryer the temperature inside the drum. They're usually found in newer dryers that have a control board. They're designed so that the resistance decreases as the temperature increases, allowing the control board to regulate the temperature by turning the heat on and off. If it's failing, it may not be sending the proper ohms to the control board, causing the dryer to get too hot. The thermistor is usually located on the blower housing. To test it, you'll have to find the tech sheet and see if there's a diagnostic mode on your dryer that you can test it in. If not, you'll have to look at the tech sheet and find the temperature and ohm reading chart. To test it, we're going to keep our meter on the ohm setting. We don't need to change ours, but you may have to adjust yours to read the proper ohm range based on your tech sheet. Remove the wires and touch a probe to each terminal. Remember, based on your room temperature, the number can be off a little one way or another, but if it's completely off or you don't get a reading at all, you'll need to replace it. Next, we need to check the blower wheel. The blower wheel circulates the warm air through the dryer and then out the exhaust. The blower wheel is usually made out of plastic. It either mounts with threads or a D-shape depending upon your motor shaft. Depending upon the design, it can be located either behind the front panel or behind the rear panel inside the blower housing. Make sure the blower wheel isn't clogged up with lint or clothing. Also, make sure the blower wheel isn't damaged and is still attached to the motor shaft. If it's damaged or not spinning properly, it may not be creating enough airflow to properly vent the dryer, causing it to get too hot. So spin the blower, which should make the motor turn, as well as the drum. If it doesn't, then you have to replace it. Now here's that safety tip we promised you earlier. Dryers cause thousands of house fires every year. Most of these are caused by a buildup of lint. Lint and dust have a tendency to build up inside the dryer and vent, and are the first things to ignite. Make sure your lint screen isn't missing or damaged, or will let lint into the vent hose. Also make sure you clean it after every load. If you have the flexible style ducting, it's recommended that you upgrade to the rigid metal kind to prevent lint buildup and the duct from accidentally being crushed. Make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions when installing new venting. Failing to clean the dryer is the number one cause of these fires, so make sure to clean the inside of the dryer, including the lint screen and blower housings, the ducting from the back of the dryer to the wall, and from the wall all the way to the outside of the house at least once a year. Once you take care of the problem, you can plug the dryer back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now. And if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.